Fog, from what we've seen so far and what we're seeing now with this draft, who's going to take it? I don't know. They're neck and neck right now. This is some incredible stuff. I mean, Tundra, they may have done some mental damage in the ending of that last game. Like, Liquid, they are probably like, oh, we're cruising. We already know we've got like a 90%. I mean, they don't know exactly the 90% win rate, obviously, but they're probably feeling that they had this immense advantage. And Tundra turns the game massively, so... Could be enough for Tundra to just take it away with this one. I think this Morphling is definitely set up for success, but definitely a bit of a riskier trap that comes out from Liquid with very limited team fight. Tundra has like five different layers of team fight being built in here too. So let's see how it's going to go down. They also have this Shadow Demon, who I really like versus Oracle. This the ult just it removes all the healing. This purge, it pulls off the Fates Edict. It pulls off any of the purifying flames. It just keeps purging constantly to be able to address that. So. Eyes on how Snaking is going to be able to be there to address it, and all the massive team fight. Yeah, I mean, well, uh, well once again, sort of a game where we're, we're getting one of these heroes that we just don't see a lot of, uh, of being played, but as you say, definite difficulties for Insane here to get the job done this game. We'll see what he can do. We'll see how the lanes end up going down in particular here. Because top lane, this morph, he could just, he could just absolutely, I mean, he's very likely to just absolutely free farm up here versus this Tide and Snapfire. And oh my god, they're gonna actually. They're looking for what? Like an instant first blood onto 33. Let's get a good anchor smash onto Mick, eh? Their body block. I mean, they're, they're gonna get him, right? I would, I would I, think so. I don't think there's any way for it to, to maneuver his way. Yeah, he should go out of this. Here. Shut him down even more. It's already like a very good lane for the morph, and you give him the first blood. All right, well, Mick, he's gonna be very happy with that. And as you say, on top of a being in a lane situation that looks pretty good for them off. Unless yeah. you, you kind of get caught by surprise with some sort of scatterblast combo across the trees. Mickey, he's got a free farm up it. He definitely should. So it looks like that mental damage, it's not quite there, Liquid. <laughs> they are definitely ready to play this one, even though they did make a couple mistakes. That one and Tundra just capitalized heavily with their big plays. And Nisha, I mean, this should be a pretty good lane for him. Yes, the Pango. Oh, oh, careful with those tanking tower hits. Yes, the Pango, we've seen them do better and better, actually, but... Oh. Oh, I mean, he's got nine. a fair few stacks on him, nine. He's got Swash. All right. Should be fine. But he's bullied off of those two or three last hits. Maybe even four or five. So we've seen the Pango doing a bit better overall. I've been hearing more and more from the players, too. They feel it is that even, even more even matchup. Maybe the back comes out slightly ahead, but Pango, he can hold his own if he's careful. Bottom Skitter, he should free farm. So free farm DK, a free farm Morphling. See which one's going to reign supreme, since this is a Tundra specialty. And and how does sort of these two carries scale up against each other? I mean, Morph is, for the most part, a just overall better one versus him, because he, if he does get to that timing with Lincoln, Scotty, etc., he's able to run down and do consistent damage versus DK. But DK has his merits, because he's just different as the Snake can get the block. I mean, that was yeah. a, a decent amount of block indeed off the back of the disruption with the illusions out, Boxy. We're able to get the, the Fade Bolt off, snaking himself, getting low, but it will be Boxy, the first to fall. Skeeter takes the kill. The Morph is more pesky in like a 1v1, but the DK, he is so annoying versus everyone else. That's the big power of him. Just pops Manta Agonims and just hits people and they can't move. So, I, I mean, Snaky he might die. Oh. incredibly annoying there. He <laughs> was able to sort of step around Zai on very low HP, knowing that he could get the stacks on him, and uh, Zai just didn't have the tools to kill him. Zai. He'll be fine. Snaking has to go for suicide. He used his entire mana pool. Goodbye, Snaking. Farewell, my friend. Goodbye. So, yep. I mean, DK free farm. He's going to have even more free farm than the Morphling, perhaps. Mickey might get slowed down a little bit, just because, like you said, it has to be a little, the slight caution versus just that big burst damage if he's not paying attention. Just gets cookied, blasted. And there's a bit of annoyance, of course, from Anchor Smash that can make you miss some last hits with damage reduction. So that, I mean, looking at that too, that is something that can also affect a Morphling a lot. We saw the other day from uh, TSM, they had the Rubik and the Lycan for damage reduction. This time there's a Tide and there's a DK. So Tide Anchor Smash, DK Breathe Fire, you know, there's, there could perhaps be some good solutions that could catch this Morph off guard. See, so bottom again, trying to get the setup on Boxy. It's a bit tougher now. Yeah, he's got the telekinesis, we'll be able to hold them back. Unless they do get some sort of crazy amount of stacks with the poison. 
Mm -hmm. It's kind of difficult for Tundra to get kills down here now. The levels are in for, Tund for for Liquid. At three, when the Shadow Demon has three, that's when the, you're, you know, those, those odd numbers, three, five, that's when the damage really does kick up, but definitely difficult. If they are playing careful. Nisha right now pulling a little bit ahead, but nine, doing pretty decent himself. I mean, this game, so where you want to see uh, Zai build on the Doom? Is he going to be building for himself, or is he going to go for like the Auras as soon as possible? I think I would. I think I'd like Auras this game. Yeah, I mean, he's playing with a morph, playing with Oracle. The mech just becomes ten times more valuable every time they do go for the save. So I think I would prefer that. Of course, they'll maybe yeah, we'll want like a blink dagger and stuff like that into the mix, but maybe just arcane boot Midas into Auras, something like that, if he wants to go a little greedier, since they can go greedy with a morphling. Rotation early, hey, Boxy. This is super early movement here, nine. I get caught low. up hard. Not bad with the flame break into the Firefly and the zap of Boxy. That's nine gone. Clever rotation. Zai feeling pretty safe down bottom. Like you said, you know, it's very difficult for them to get all those poison stacks, so Boxy makes the quick heads up move. Cool stuff. He's trying to protect the bounty rune. Snaking. He might not even pay with his life. I don't think there's any way out of this one. He's got a disruption to offer up, but uh, only going to be able to hold back the one of them. This feels like... Oh, and they're actually going to use the arcane boots from Zai to give Nisha the mana. He runs over and gives it to him since that bounty rune was taken. Well, you know, his ally had to take it, so Snake didn't deny it. Nice little mini rotation coming out. Rune in about 15 seconds. So both the supports will rotate over. Nisha is six already though, so nine does have to be a bit careful. There is a last note coming into play. Whoop. He'll get them. Okay, he gets the illusion. Maybe he can turn it himself now. He's got the backup of Aramis. They hit the scatter blast with the cookie combo. Nisha's just in. He'll knock him back a little bit with a flame break. Get a bit of damage done with the Firefly. TP over from Insania, and Insania's gonna be ready to help out. There's nine. He's dying in the Firefly. The final swashbuckle will allow him to get the kill. Insania will clean him up in return. And they get they actually do get side bottom. Okay. I mean poison stacks must have added up there from Snay. Yeah, he got four of them onto him, so 472 damage from Snay. Enough time to chase him out. Nisha trying to dance, play around that swashbuckle. It does get picked off. Of course, Liquid themselves, they, yeah, very much having the freedom to let Insania yep. leave that top lane. And Mikkei, more than happy to, to sit his solo farming against the, the Tide. Yeah, right now, they're. I mean, even though that whole kind of trade thing happens, they're feeling very good, Snake. Does he have enough mana for enough poison stacks? Up with the Dragon for Mosquito. We'll have a step up in damage output, Boxy turns up with a Fade Bolt. He's got one more. It's not quite enough. Nine's here, though. Zai, they'll just try and make them uh, spend as much time possible chasing him down, but he's going to be gone. Nice rotation. Quick moves. <laughs> Setting up Skeeter for success. Skeeter, he's got that Midas queued up. <laughs> yeah, looking like Nisha did go to jungle for a second there, giving Insania a little bit XP. But yeah, like you said, Mikke, he's left alone up top, so... Liquid, going to look to punish things around the map with their support rotations early. They're even getting a lot of stacks prepped. Seeing Boxy, I think what, it's going to be a quad ancient stack and a quad hard camp stack already out. Some stacks also on the side of Tundra. Not as many though. But Aramis has also been trying to match this effort. It's going to be some early boots of travels for Nisha. It's pretty much guys them done. She top lane, Boxy is going to join with Mickey. Still very difficult to kill this Tide. Okay. Um, okay, Mickey with a bit of interesting skill, but three points in the attribute shift, none in the adaptive. Usually you see like a three, one, two, or something like that. Well, they have enough damage, but Insania they should. Yeah. There, yeah, they've got the three of them here. So 33 gets another rank smash off. Deal with the extra bit of burst from the two supports. Oh, Snake. Oh, like this could be cool if they're able to steal these. He's like, well, I'll take this stack. He's going to have nine as well around to try and clean it up. I mean, Liquid, they've got to protect this. 
He's got lasso. Will catch on to him, but Knight should still have the chance to get a rolling thunder off if necessary. Stun. Gets away to the side. Skidders in with the stun. They'll jump forward with the cookie. On to Zai. Zai's gone. And they're going to take a bunch of the stack here. I mean, yeah, Liquid, they've got, they've got to get over in their numbers. They've got to push Tundra away from this triangle. Not easy versus this dragon and, and another this Another I mean, it's Tania. He's getting very low. Starts to back off. Turns with another round of spells over to Skeeter. He gets knocked back by the Flame Break. Defensive disruption. Buying some time here for Snake King. I mean, nine. He's picked up another kill. They can look over to Boxy as well. They're going to get a third. And 33's here to clear the stack. Nisha also might go down. Cookie forward. They'll prop the Ravage for this. Take him out of the game. I mean, Take the stack. Oh, this is massive. Tundra. A fantastic fight here in, in Liquid's Triangle. And they're absolutely getting the entirety of this stack as well. Oh, baby. And they have their own... Oh, actually, they cleared some of their stacks, but they have stacks to go back to as well. Snaking. Giving the information for his team, they bring literally everybody yeah. to contest this. I mean, th and they needed to. That Absolutely awesome. doing the right thing there. Tundra turning up in full force to take away that area of the map. Even like this, I mean, the little plays, the spell casting was Boxy? excellent there from Tundra. Boxy. Well, he's going to show in the mid. No one straight away. him. Nisha's back in action. Boxy will start to back off. The kisses are online. Nisha. Got to be careful, trying to do his best to dodge them. And will give him some protection against the magical damage of the Kisses. Allows them to take down nine. And Nisha will try and chase down 33 as well. But the cookie's back up from Aramis. He's able to get 33 bounced back to safety. Mikkei's here. What? 33 will get the anchor smash off. Mikkei's going to continue to want to chase this. Aramis surrounded by the rest of Liquid. Can't finish him. 33, he's actually able to survive there. <laughs> Thought Mickey had him for sure. Yeah, I think he just saw limiting the damage with the anchor smash yep. was enough. 33 able to keep him range. Bottom lane. He's just full on aggression here, already reaching up to 18 kills at 10 minutes in. TP down to the bottom lane for Nisha. Zai will be able to live. Nisha, he's on to Skeeter. Last one, one. It's up in one second. Oh, oh it's back up just in time. Oh, and this is like, this is some of the most, like, tier one Dota at its finest. 19 kills in 11 minutes. Everyone just running at each other. Liquid got their stack stolen, but they'll strike back. Super good responses, Nisha. I mean, you could, literally perfect timing for his lasso to come look, back Look at this in mid as well. In mid, nine. They're gonna find nine. Mickey and Boxy swinging over. I mean, I, I don't think he expected Mickey to still be here. I don't think he expected the burst that came out from Boxy too. And bottom lane, Aramis. Wait, what? Wait, hold up. Wait, that was a... He just got a solo kill <laughs> on Zai. He didn't even need to use the ult. <laughs> all okay, right. Okay, all right. <laughs> this game's getting crazy. I, Boxy with the breathe fire plus swashbuckle. I think Nine did not expect that burst damage. Playing very aggressively mid. Nine to 12. Aramis, again, having another great performance. I mean, we, we, we saw it the other day on the, the snap far right. Sure did. Greed versus greed. 33. He's not going to go down his greedy route this game. He's feeling like he's got to be more of those auras. Doesn't doesn't, gonna, doesn't go for this meteor hammer, it looks like. It's I. He might even be setting up for this. He's got Doom available. They're looking to punish 33. Tumbler toy over. Hello. Oh, they're, they're really going for him. Dropping down the Doom, bringing in four heroes. They want this tide dead. Can they get Mickey out of this? Bottom rotation is here from Tundra. They know he's on his own. There's the setup. Disruption into the Rolling Thunder. Kiss is coming in as well. It's a good angle around the cliff, but Mickey manages to waveform up there. They'll continue to chase. You know, they're not stopping for this one. They, they know that blood. there's no backup coming in for Mickey as Tundra push in and take down Mickey. Moves everywhere. Great play. He's already fully strength morphed. Can't survive, and they'll get the tower themselves here. Liquid looking to rotate themselves immediately to try to catch back up to Tundra. Boxy. He's in with the stolen swashbuckle. TP's coming in as well. Tundra. Now, I mean, can they really fight here? No. They'll let Snake and go. The rest of them back off. They're always fine with letting Snake and go. Two, four, and six. He tends to be the sacrificial lamb. Nisha lasso's back up. He's looking for another one. Skitter has to get away. Aramis. Looks like he should be okay, too. Yeah, Boxy not quite able to get close enough with the swashbuckle. Nine hitting a pretty damn good timing here, all things considered, in the matchup that he was given. Four and four. Oh, Aramis. Diffusal. And Aramis, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, he, oh, he's going to do it. Oh. Oh. He's still alive, finally. He gets taken out, but some good jukes around the tree line means he lives long enough to see the death of Boxy. You me. Hey, these moves. This is crazy. So far, we're seeing Liquid with a bit of the edge, though. Even though there's timings coming out, 
This Morphling, he has his Lincolns in a second here, so he's going to be able to get a little bit more involved, avoiding that, you know, pretty much that only instant stun that's going to be tripping him up there. A bit difficult for them to break it early on, too. Oh, we've gone the power ends. It's going to be down bottom. Okay. In this for Nisha. And Nisha, he's got the, I mean, it's the BZM and the Mikey build, I call it, right? The Witchblade queued up next afterwards. The solo kill potential from it is ridiculous. Yeah, definitely seems the way to go nowadays on bat. Uh, yeah. Especially if, you, if, you, if you're having a decent start, and certainly the case for Nisha. Second highest net worth right now. It keeps you scaling. That's the biggest thing for me. It's like, yeah, some, the BKB blink sometimes is very necessary in some games, but you want to be able to scale a lot too on this bat. Mid. Snay boldly pushing the tower. Nisha does spot 33 also. Can they stop this liquid? Poison versus poison. Or do you just let this guy? I mean, it's hard, right? Fighting into the Ravager 33 here. I'll probably just let this tower fall. They want a battle. I mean, they're they're deeping the in. Doom is up. 33. They're straight away. They'll drop it on the tide. They'll start to run him out of the fight, but off to the side, they've caught Nisha. Nine. He's in with the Rolling Thunder, keeping Nisha controlled. The rest of Liquid desperately trying to kill a 33 during this. He's alive. The promise. Is there just in time? He's still taking an awful lot of damage. But Insanium might just he's be okay. able to save him. Nisha, he's going to be able to live. I think that was one HP, Owen. I mean, it was. I, I think or three HP. Two. Maybe three HP. We, we still sort of, after the false promise, he, he, he only just had enough HP to stay alive. And Liquid, with that, they're able to clean up. Triple kill for Boxy on the Rubik. I, 33 somehow I <laughs> ends up surviving all of it, but he has to run. The Doom is effective. They're able to take the fight. Let's see the HP. I think it was three. Maybe not quite one. Oh! Three HP. Three HP. What a save <laughs> from Insane. Oh what a I mean, we saw in that fight as well, Insane is just making a beeline straight towards Nisha. He knew who he needed to help out there, and he absolutely does. He saves him. And they just ignored the tide. You know, they doomed him and just was like, get out of here. We're not going for you. We want bigger targets. Oh. They now in trouble. Oh! Ends up surviving with a stick. Liquid hanging on to this mid tier one at 16 minutes still. Ah, uh, yeah, I mean that. And just, yeah, each time. They see this tide, they drop the doom down onto him. They oh, don't yeah. want to fight into a ravage, they just eliminate the opportunity. Boxy, he jumps in with it aggressively, gets the kill, he'll certainly die for that one. Give Skater the kill. Oh, Snaking ends up getting it. Uh, it's, a, it's a kill streak. It's a kill nonetheless, but you definitely wanted to give as much as possible to Skater in these moments. Nothing they can control there, though, because the Demonic Purge. Boxy being incredibly aggressive. 7, 4, and 9 on this Rubik. Aramis? And this time, wow, they've still got fortification. I mean, this tower's still not going down. Mickey. turns out they'll be able to get the tower deny if they want to. I mean, 33's going to go for it. They will deny it. Whew. 17 minutes for them to claim it. Look what has stalled it out nicely. Aramis does have a mech finished up. I mean, oh. Great timings for him. Yeah, they're, they're going to try and get into the jungle. Start to, to sort of close down the areas of the map that Mikkei feels safe in. Nine. Right, Mikkei, he's going to go straight for nine. Quick burst takes nine down to half HP. Box is going in. He's able to steal the swashbuckle, closes the gap a bit. But nine. He's already out. Hey, Boxy, relentless aggression this game. Seven, four, and nine. He really is just... Every time he sees the Pango, he's going in. He's and he, always, go and he always gets so rich on the Rubik as well. He does. Uh, we saw it earlier this series. Aramis is keeping up. Like, Aramis, he's one in four and seven. He almost has the same network as the Rubik, though. So it says a lot of with how he's been able to pick and choose his battles, too. Another very close game here. 31 kills total in 17 minutes. Let's see what they can find. Liquid. Boxy. He'll start the fight looking straight away for Snake. In the Ravage comes out for 33. Catch it on the two of them. Kisses. Flying over Boxy. He's going to get saved momentarily by Insania. Insania trying to do his best to keep Boxy alive, but Boxy will still fall. Nisha was able to push on with the BKB, and with the help of Mikke, they've got the damage to burst through Snaking. But 33, he picks up the double. Doom. Doom. It's going to be dropped down onto nine. And that will be enough to allow them to claim nine in return. So they two for two. They end up getting that big kill. Only two supports dropping on Liquid. While Tundra. Do lose two big targets, and it's a lot of ults committed too. It's Ravage, it's Kisses. I think Liquid's pretty happy with that. Skeeter probably still pretty happy though, on the flip side, on the other side of the map, just farming. He needs to wait for timings as this DK more than anything. BKB is finished, but as we've seen, so two more items and levels that are required for him to feel strong. 
Mickey. I mean, he just walks. Yeah. <laughs> takes the bounty right in front of him. All right. Easy. Thank you. Easy money. <laughs> Boxy to join him. Yeah, full BKB on Skeeter. Let's see what they want to fight next, Tundra. They don't have their ults. For right, uh, for that's now. true. I guess without a dragon form coming to an end. Yeah, they got to be a little bit careful how they play on the map now for these next few moments. Zai, of course, doesn't have Doom, but for, for Tundra, it's a bit more important that they do have them. Nisha going to reset. He has his lasso available, and I believe he almost has the Witchblade finished if he wants to commit for it. Might go for the blink this game to get to the back line, though. I'm going to try for the setup on Zai. But, uh, yeah, underneath the tier two, they don't want to push too much, and TPs are coming in. Here comes Nisha. And Boxy. See if we can get any catch here. Already the blink out from nine. Nisha. Going in with the Firefly. Courage. I mean, they, they know that Tundra's got the numbers here. So a bit difficult for Liquid to fight in and to head on there. The full five mana Tundra were ready to fight. Good thing Snake covers his spell there nicely. I was going to say, you got to be careful when you use the Demonic Purge sometimes versus these Rubik's. He will cover it with the poison. And okay, Nisha. I mean, okay, go more greedy. I was going to say, I, I could see the reasoning if he did want to prioritize the blink before the Witchblade, but is going to just go for that. Because he wants to jump back lines, right? Like, that's the ideal. And was it, yeah, he wants to get in, but he also wants to kill him quick enough. Yeah. Right? Tundra, they're going to sneak a Roche here. I'll this and, is and clever. This is a, has been at the cost of Skeeter's Midas. It's been a, a fair few moments now that he's not managed to use it. This is really clever stuff. I don't think Liquid's going to expect this. No Doom available. Ravage is back up. So Tundra, yeah, they can force this. Auras, auras and auras for 33. I mean, the smoke's coming out from Liquid, but indeed just a little bit too late. Tundra, they've already got it. That was quick. I don't I don't think they expected this by any means. And okay, not, I mean, Zai, he's not going for the auras for his team. So he is playing more for himself, you were asking before. To blink BKB on him. I mean, I guess they, they sort of feel that maybe Insania on his own is enough to keep Mikkei alive, so less necessity to get those auras to, to kind of protect them off. Yeah, I guess so. Once, I guess they want multiple forms of initiation also, so they can catch this pesky backline versus this SD, and he wants to be able to probably just get the Blink Doom on the Tidehunter multiple times. And needs BKB this game, of course, since there's so much team fight. But, I mean, that, the, yeah, okay. the, the best fights that they've had liquid have been the ones where Nisha, I know, sorry, Zai has shut down 33. Yeah. Just got in and dropped the Doom, even if they don't kill him. Just stopping him from being able to get the Ravage off in the 5v5s. So Roche secured for Tundra. Liquid, still in a very comfortable position, of course. But this is a Tundra. This is more of an age just to kind of like farm for Skeeter, of course. And there will be that Wraith Pact. I mean, this is a lot of damage reduction, Owen. Wraith Pact, Anchor Smash, Breathe Fire damage reduction. Oh. A high chance that Tundra is going to be able to survive through just some of these jumps that Liquid wants to get yeah. away with. They, they might be down 6k, but absolutely... In it with a chance here to, to take these team fights, Tundra. Damage reduction in Auras, like Pipe, Mech. These, these things will add up in a lot of these battles. I mean, th this is how they sort of used to smash games in the past, right? Mm-hmm. That was literally the TI, TI strategy. I'm going to continue the push. Liquid, they want to try to mount a defense here. I mean, they, they still know that they're strong. They know that they've got this lead at the moment, Liquid. But it is it's still into an Aegis. They're going to try it. Okay? It's going to jump forward. We'll get the Lincoln Sphere pop to nine. He's just going to sweep straight through the trees here with the Rolling Thunder. The again. drop down on the 33. The Tundra, they'll back off. Nine, can you get away? I mean, Liquid, can they still chase? The Doom is running out. I don't think they can. I think it's getting a bit tricky now for Liquid. They gotta give respect. Ravage is up. Aegis is still on Skeeter. They've gotta back away. They're gonna just deny the tower also. They don't wanna give any extra gold. Will they get the deny though? Oh! Well, they'll get the kill and they'll get the last hit on the tower here, Tundra. Yeah, Boxy tried. <laughs> Mickey just died as well, by the way. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was well, trying to what, clear that camp, wasn't he, right? And uh, nine, nine found him. I guess Nine just, yeah. he had vision. He just swashbuckled him oh, when right. he was low. Well, not only just getting a tier two and a kill uh, on a Rubik, a dead morphling. I didn't even see that. <laughs> I literally looked over and I was like, wait, what? All right, vision. It's everything at times. Okay, Tundra. Making big things happen. And they have Ravage still. So can potentially look to still take fights. 
Nisha. He does have Shard and Witchblade, but I feel like in that fight, you know, now you can maybe see the repercussion of not having the Blink to be able to force the fight, to force the issue where they had to kind of reset away and allowed Tundra to go back in and get some kills. So, you know, it's always a push and pull when you do go for these, some of these type of greedier items. Big stuff from Tundra. 4K lead for Liquid, but Tundra feeling like they're a bit more in the driver's seat of how they're able to take and execute these fights. I mean, it, it really is sort of just around getting that that sneaky Roshan. Mm -hmm. It sort of put the game in a bit of an awkward spot for Liquid. You know, that getting that Roche, getting that Aegis was absolutely part of that, their game plan to keep growing the lead, but Tundra, they take that away from them. And it's giving, like, it's just giving Skeeter this this safety to be able to finish up these huge items, you know, his Manta, his Aghanims and stuff like that. Eventually, it gives him a good window to be able to scale towards it. Liquid, they want to stop that, though. 15 seconds for Doom. Nisha. Aramis has got a lot of backup. Nisha dropping the, 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 the lasso for this, but the disruption comes out from Snake King. They can be able to buy him a bit of extra time to lift 33 pops to Ravage. They just blow up Zai. Aramis is alive. I mean, Mickey is trying to finish him off, but a cookie to the low ground. Aramis is going to live. They lose Insania as well. They finally get something out of this. They take down Snaking, but they lose two for that. And uh, yeah, against all the aggression, Aramis is able to get away. And in the tree, Skeeter, he finds Nisha on the escape. Aramis comes back in. The tips are thrown out, and it's another fight for Tundra. Oh my, the, I mean, Aramis, he gets initiated on. I mean, I'll give the credit to Snaking this time, though, the Demonic Cleanse. Dispels everything. All the sticky stacks immediately just get removed. He's able to survive because of it. Look at this, like, demonic cleanse. No damage coming out from the Bat Rider without those sticky stacks, and he's able to disengage. Oh, Tundra, these big team fights continue going in their favor. The, the auras, I mean, it really is all these auras, all this damage reduction, the team fight. It's really, really adding up for his liquid. Yeah, and it hurts big time if Zai's the one that gets taken out at the start of the fight. Oh, yeah. That's a huge amount of their gold, their net worth that's just not getting put into play. That's beautiful stuff. I love... I, that's, this is one of the other reasons why we've seen the SD so much. Sure, it's like you can use the offensive demonic purge in a lot of ways, but the cleanse. Especially versus Batrider. Super effective. Liquid. Can this strike back here nine? Boxy's got a dragon tail. Can they punish? See if this is enough. Should be. Yeah. Dragon tail into lasso. Nisha's got the damage. They Speed might up. lose something out of it. See if they can find a return. He gets the dragon tail off there in the last moments of the dragon form. <laughs> the dream. Literal last second of dragon form. And downtime. It's like this. Downtime. Yep. Ravage is going to be back up in 40 seconds when the Rubik respawns. So Tundra. Still able to take these effective fights. And Skater again. And he is 18. 18 in Manta. He is keeping neck and neck with this Morphling. I mean, they're, they're losing the lead. Hey, Liquid. Mm -hmm. That's sort of why that 4K, 5K lead is down to a 2K lead. I mean, sure, Mickey, he's still at the top, but Tundra, they're so close behind him. Does he have... What's he going to be... I mean, he's, he probably just has to go Scotty next. You have to imagine that for Mickey. Still a bit away. Big deal that the DK is able to keep up with him, though. And you have Ravage back on cooldown. Game very neck and neck. It really is. Yeah, it's been a fantastic series so far. And uh, yeah, this game, it, it, it could be anybody's. Yep. 20 to 23 also. This is, more of a, this is a more exciting one. We've got a crap ton of kills in 27 minutes. Zai does commit for the Aghanims this game early. Much earlier than we usually see. Why, why, why do you think so the acceleration this game? On the axe. Hmm. That's a good question. I mean, maybe just for super... I mean, I mean, I was going to say, like, the late game's killing, but then Octarine tends to have him more minutes. I guess just wanting to... He wants more targets than he wants to be able to doom. Sticking on top of the tide, being able to chase him out. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Aramis. Well, he's going to feel confident to step up into the jungle. I mean, they can take this. This outpost here looks like Liquid won't want to try and pick a fight. 33's got the full Lotus now. Maybe he's also just anticipating a potential Lincolns that'll be coming out at some point soon since he's playing with Batrider. But he's Batrider with, he's doing with the Batrider's team, right? So you have to imagine that Tundra's probably looking at being like, yeah, they might get Lincolns. So maybe that's also what Zai's thinking. Mickey, I believe 150 gold till Scotty's done. A 
See if Tundra can try and force a fight before that next pickup's there from uh, from Mickey for Liquid. He's got it done. It's about to hit level 20 also. How are we doing on the Roshan time? It's going to still be a two minute two minute timer on the Rosh. A long one. Okay. Let me check out actually neutral items really quick here for the side of Tundra. All right. Brigand's Blade still being held by the Pango. Mindbreaker on the DK. They have three tier three neutrals just chilling. I mean, Mindbreaker is one of the more broken items. If you just get lucky, you just get these silences, you can get so much connection and so much out of it. Especially for something like Morphling. Oh, they'll scan around this area liquid. Yeah, they have to okay. be very concerned about the fact that Roshan could be up soon. And the Tundra, they would look to take it. So they need to bring the fight to them. Smoke on smoke. Tundra. I mean, both teams very keen to fight right now. They've got Blink Dagger on Boxy. Another yeah. way of initiation, but already in the mid lane. They get the quick jump onto Boxy. He wasn't prepared for that at all. We'll see them going with the Doomsai. He's in on top of Snaking. Already the BKB's out from Skidder. Skidder just trying to punch back at Zai Zai. He's trying to delete the two supports. He'll chase down Aramis, and he'll get the kill. As they've taken out the two of them. The buyback was there straight away from Snaking for this fight. The Ravage is up. They'll get the stun opening onto Zai. Zai goes down. Snake dies twice, though. He diebacks instantly. See so if there's anything more to be found in Mickey. Ah, there's a DD rune. And Mickey, he's going to absolutely pick that one up. DD on the morph, but with three of his teammates dead. They have buyback. They, I mean, I mean Mickey wants to fight. They got to give respect to this. how much damage this morph ah. does. He's 20, so he has waveform attack targets, too. Big ults were used from both sides. And one by that. So, so, Snake Kings. So it seems like, yeah, multiple different reasons, I think, why this Agonyms for the Doom is going to be coming out. As we said, you know, the Lincoln's potentially going to be coming, but he wants these, this Doom to hit multiple targets and get on these supports as well as the Tide. Yeah, I mean, you know, Zai did his job in that He fight. did. He definitely he got did. in, and he basically made it so that neither support of Tundra was able to play their game. There was literally like three fights going on in that one. There was Nine versus the Batrider and the Oracle on one side. There's the Morphling versus the Shadow Demon and stuff. And then there's a Tidehunter versus that Doom. Some interesting stuff the way it is going down. Just very good targets Nine. being prioritized for both sides. I mean, what's still? Okay, Nisha. He's going to get Glimmer. Skeeter. He's going to jump in onto Boxy. See if they can find more from this. It's a dead Rubik. Waveform away from Mickey Will. Up and escape from the, the Rolling Thunder. Another Glimmer throwing the way of Nisha. I mean, Skeeter's got his big item timing. Ags, Manta, it's online. And Roshan. Roshan's up. Skeeter, jumping for more. Yeah, but well, they've still, still got the Kisses online from Aramis as they well. Do. So if Tundra find any sort of chance to get the jump up to the high ground, Aramis is going to be able to lay down the damage. 20 seconds for Rubik. They, they want to stop this. Mickey. He's going to stand right up at the entrance of the pit here. He feels very safe. Already able to take out 33 to half health. He's going to jump in aggressively, but Aramis is able to get 33 back up to the high ground with the cookie. 33 stuck. He's stuck. He's having a TP out of this. He's in the spot, the dreaded spot. He'll TP over the tier two. He'll be able to walk back over. Mickey, getting slowed down. And he's going to get back up. They need to provide some sort of help. I mean, Insania's trying to get over towards him. Mickey, he'll be able to waveform back in time, and Insania's in with the heels. Just sends one of those illusions onto the supports, and they just literally cannot catch up to their buddy. Doom is back up. Ravage on cooldown, 10 seconds. Tense moments. I mean, can either of these teams get straight back into Roche? It's not that low. It, take, it takes some time. Even if they have a good amount of minus armor here on the side of Tundra, their straight raw physical damage, it's a bit slower than the side of Liquid with this DK. Oh, nine. He also got himself stuck in some trees there. Whoopsie. I can't believe that spot still exists right there. <laughs> like, 33 just got stuck, and he's like, oh my god, I got a TP. They're going to start it. DK4 is back up. I mean, they take it pretty quick with the DK, and with the Manta Illusions being sent out, it's hard for Liquid to kind of sneak up on them. Liquid's got everything ready. Can they get in? I mean, they really need to. They, they can't let Tundra take this. Nisha scouts it. It's starting to get low. How are the buybacks looking? Ba ba only Pango and Oracle have buyback at the moment. Zai. Doom. Zai. He's in with the Doom. It's a little bit early, though. As Roshan not quite falling. They're committing. They're trying to take down this type of the disruptions there from Snaking. 33 is going to have a little bit of an extra chance to live for this fight. The Doom's still persists, though, and 33. He's still alive. 
He's able to step out of the range of it. 33 is going to live. And Sai's going to get it taken down by Aramis with the kisses. 33, he'll Mickey. die, but he gets the Ravage off. Catches Mickey. They try and control the Morph Link. He's getting low. He's shifting up on the strength. But the cookie in from Aramis. Swashbuckle from nine. Boxy's getting focused down by the, the, the right clicks of Aramis. Mickey's got one more swashbuckle to end up with. Another burst. Mickey being protected by Insania with his false promise. But now he's got to retreat. He's low on mana. He's low on HP. The TP out for Nisha will be successful. There's nothing to stop They're him. Mickey. Insania. Trying his best to bail Mickey out of this one. Mickey, he's going to be able to TP out. Roche, it's so low. Tundra, they might just be able to secure this one here with these kills. Nisha, Nisha, still playing with them though. But looks like Tundra, they will inevitably get it. The, I, mean, I think they would have lost more people if these buybacks and stuff didn't come out. Like Aramis and 33 having it. The aura is significant as... Oh, 33, he goes, I want the Aegis. They're prioritizing me. Skeeter, he's not really under much threat as we've seen. He's 5-1 and 16 this game. These are tense fights. Both teams, honestly, both teams playing the fights really good. Like the way that they're target prioritizing these supports. Insania gets instantly gone on. Aramis gets jumped. Snaking gets jumped. This is a support nightmare. Does, of course, cost two buybacks from the side of Tundra, but well worth it there. I'm now in the next. <clears throat> You're good, don't worry, buddy. <laughs> next, I mean, next few moments, they have a lot. They have a blanket now for Ravage to come up. It's 50 seconds. They're actually the ones getting aggressive. Seeing the next item choice here from Mikke, he needs a break. I mean, Skeeter, he's unkillable. All these auras, all this damage reduction, it's ca definitely causing Mikke problems to focus fire targets. I mean, do you still go on 33 now he's got this Aegis? I mean, what sort of Zai's game plan in the next fight? I, who knows, really? It's so difficult, because you have to deal with these supports, but you also just have to really worry about the Ravage. Maybe you just have to... Maybe you wait for the Silver Edge for the Morph, and you hard commit and kill the DK now at this point. If you're able to get the timing during, like, all this Aegis and stuff like that. It's tough. I mean, Insania, they have to find ways to protect him. I'm just seeing Skidder every single one of these fights. Him and Nine, they buy, they forego everything else and they jump this poor Oracle. Honestly, Insania needs a Blink Dagger. And I see him queuing it up. I don't blame him. All right. He needs some way to bypass all of these stuns, Ravage, etc. Full Octarine on Nisha. Okay. Oh, that's an illusion. Oh, Skidder. I mean, Skidder, he wants to go. He's going to jump Zai. Zai. Lots of TP's coming in. Zai has to BKB TP out. They even follow up with a false promise just to make him super safe on the escape. Oh, they both get out. Top tower is under attack. Hey, look at Skeeter go. I mean, he is feeling so He confident. knows that Nisha's still around. Oh, Nisha. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. He'll be all right. How's the Silver Edge? Silver Edge is almost done. So they, they actually could... Now at this point, if they want to try... They can do some type of risky plays where they commit for the DK. Break him, full focus him, just try to kill him. But could be a risk. Well, everything's up for Tundra. I mean, yeah, that's definitely going to be the play. You can't go for 33 whilst he's got this Aegis. No. You've got to go for one of these quick kills on the other two cores. But it's just not easy anyway, because they're safe, right? The snaking is a priority target oh my as goodness, well. Boxy. Glimmer Cape. <sighs> yeah, we'll get out. Well, Ether Lens now on its way for, for Skeeter. I mean, it was in fact the, the completed Octary. The full thing. So now the, the uptime, the, the stuns, the, the, the readiness to fight with the Dragon Form, and of course the, the frequent Manta Illusions just coming out, being sent on supports, pushing lanes. It's going to be a lot for Liquid to have to deal with. And Liquid, for the longest of time this game, they've held this lead, but uh, you don't feel it. it. It feels dead even this game. And if absolutely. anything, maybe Tundra with the lead. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I, it feels dead even. This is just execution. Okay. It's, it really does feel like that. I mean, the buybacks are going to be significant as well, too since the Tide and the, and the Snapfire were forced to use it earlier. Oracle also. But yeah, I think this is, this is anyone's game. The scaling, it's coming up for both sides. Lincoln's, of course, done from 9... I mean, this is a while ago. He also has a BKB and Basher. One minute until Aegis does disappear. So it looks like Liquid, they're just doing some split push and just waiting until that Aegis goes down to look for that next big fight. I mean, what's the next big pickups for Liquid? I mean, I think they've got the, I mean, the I, biggest yeah, one, right? For now, for quite so. some time. Yeah. 
Maybe the next bigger one, a big one would be like Insania's Blink, but honestly, he might have to just save for buyback since it's going to be coming up for three, min three minutes or uh, yeah. so. I mean, buyback's going to be huge for both sides. Yeah. We, we've seen already how much buyback's changed okay. the fight. They get the jump they on and they're in with the Silver Edge hit, and just look how quickly the Dragon Knight dies. They found the prime target. The first uh, mistake uh, from Skinner. He's going to try and look for more. He's able to get him with the last though. It's going to buy a bit of time for Zai to close in on him. Zai's actually going to blink straight past to look for, for more kills as he knows that Mikkei and Nisha, they can finish your snaking. Oh, the first mistake Skidder has made this game. That ward, it was still there from Liquid. They had all the vision of He's him. He's dead for what? Dead for 70 seconds? He's dead for a while. I mean, he this, committed. this is definitely an opportunity for Liquid to push. They'll at least get a tier 2 out of this if they want to. Absolutely. Mikkei Silver Edge coming into play immediately. Almost 25 on this Morphling now, too. A window. It's been found there from Lit. And, and they can absolutely keep going. I mean, look at the Aegis. That's also about to expire. In fact, it's, it's just gone. The Aegis is gone now in 33. Liquid. They could push high ground. Five versus three. Sure can. 40 seconds. Just might be able to get a... Honestly, you might be able to get a Rax here. Oh, they don't have Zai with them uh, at the I, moment. I, I think they still keep going, though. 30 seconds. Let's see what Tundra can do. Ooh. Nice dodge from Mikke. Oh, 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 he's stuck! Oh, 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 he's stuck in that weird point! I think you have that on the dire side as well, don't you? That yep. little spot on the side of the, the stairs where you can get trapped. Tundra had RNG significantly in their favor last time. <laughs> this time, two times we're seeing people get stuck for a moment. Fortified. Under the fortifications, so Liquid, they will back off. We're okay. respecting the fact that Skeeter's up as well in five. They don't want to keep pushing on into this. Not able to finish off that Rax, but yeah, definitely the appropriate time to step away. Nisha, they're feeding him the tomes now. He's getting close to 25. He is continuing to get the scale. We've seen several times this tournament what a Batrider 25 can do. Just erase targets in one second. Uh, especially if they end up getting broken mm -hmm. by, uh, by Mikke. Broken by Mikke and even potential broken by Doom later on. Not yet. Still only level 21 for Zai, but the potential of the 25 will also be there eventually. And Mikke 25. Finishes up the Hurricane Pike. Uh, Tundra. Skeeter's hit. He's going to jump in aggressively, but Zai's in with the BKB and the Doom. They're on top of the DK. Skeeter, he's dying so quickly, he's uh -oh, gone. Oh, Skeeter. He jumped him for this. I mean, Liquid, they're absolutely going to keep chasing out. Tundra here, see if they can pick more up. Azai is closing in on the 33. He'll jump straight up towards Snaking and Aramis. Look to isolate the supports in the back of the lines. Mikke's there to help him out, get the double. I mean, Nine will kill Boxy, but they've lost two for this. And Nine, he has to put the BKB and run. He's got no place he to be in this fight anymore. Goes to v for the BKB TP out. Good attempt for him in Stania there to try and catch him through those last moments of the BKB on the TP out, but won't be able to stop him. But still, I mean, they've got to be a bit more careful with their initiations there. Stay. I mean, these, these type of like mistakes in these type of games, these high tier games, they get punished. And that one against Skeeter kind of recklessly jumps up. They just have triple BKBs. They all just pop it. Ravage connects on none of them. They full focus. And now, again, no buyback no DK. Bu on the two of them. I mean, Liquid, they're straight down mid. They're, without a doubt, going to be able to get one set of racks here. Absolutely. I mean, Titsu's already been taken in the bottom lane. They can look for more. They sure can. Full and refresher he, on Nisha now. He's about to be 25. Liquid have found a huge opening in these last two fights. Now in a very comfortable position this game. I mean, just w w with the three of them alive, they can't push Mikkei off the barracks. No, they can't touch They him. can't stop him. They need absolutely everything, and even now at this point, it's looking looking very difficult with those last two fights going completely in Liquid's favor. I mean, how how do you survive as a DK at this point in the game? I mean, the break it's it's, inc it's incredibly effective. Not sure. Mikke even getting his own blink dagger too to just commit and get that break. It's all about this positioning in order to get Skitter. Game was literally neck and neck until the 40 minute mark. Or 38 minute mark, whatever the catch was top. And Liquid now in a comfortable position where they can honestly just, they've got all the items they really need in the game. Sit back, farm buybacks, have the numbers, have like 10 heroes that can come into the fight. And Tundra have to try to get some type of surprise play at this point, but it is not easy. And to the point as well, maybe Skeeter can't be the one to start the fight. So, somebody so. else has got to go in first. Nine probably just has to. Yeah. But it's like I said, not easy, because even if that, they can just potentially just save for buybacks on the side of Liquid with this comfortable window they've broken here. 
How are these buybacks looking? I mean, Tundra, they have four of them at the ready here. About to have the fifth one. Liquid, they almost have everybody as well, except for the Morphling. Oh boy. You know, full swift blink on the cake. He's huge. I mean, he, he, he blinks in. Silver Edge hit. He's just going to shred whoever he goes on. Mosquito. They're going to see him. He's still going to get the jump off. They got the last one. Jumps in with the opening stun on to Zai, but the false promise comes out straight away. And he's able to put the BKB with the last one on Mosquito. And Zai, he's able to get the Doom off. They're in on top of the, 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 the DK. I mean, Mikke, he'll get caught by the Ravage, but he's got so much HP to play with. Nine. He's taken out the two supports. Question is if they can do anything more now, because Mikke. He waveforms in over towards Aramis. Aramis goes down. The turn. They get the stun onto both Nisha and Mickey. Mickey. Nine. He gets the triple. He has to bail out. He Mickey. Sure does. He knows this is no longer a fight for Liquid. I mean, he oh, waveform TPs. The Lotus Agonims. Like Nisha doesn't have an Agonims, but Skeeter does, and he's Lotus. Nisha actually lassos him, and it reflects and catches, I believe, the Morphling and the Bat Rider, if I'm not mistaken. I'd... I. Mean, <laughs> what an interaction. Well, they're buying back, but. I mean, can they force them away from the pit? This is, look how many buybacks they use. These four buybacks here, Liquid. I mean, if Mika dies there. all in on this. If Mika had died there, the game was, I mean, could have just been over. If they get the jump onto 33, but it's a hard target to go on. Oh, Mika oh, trying to step forward with the buybacks there from Aramis. Roshan currently a half HP. I cannot believe what just happened there. I mean, Nisha thinks that he should double lasso, but it literally completely turns against them. I mean, Liquid had to be so careful. If they die, they're going to be dead for good. Skitter. He's going to get it on top of the DK. Mika turns. They're trying to bring the DK down. He's able to do it. Oh no, there's disruption. It buys a bit of time. Skinner, oh, he got the BKB off. Skinner's still alive. alive. He didn't die. He's able to live. Gets away. And now it's Liquid in shambles. Oh my Both god. Both dead. No buyback. Zai, he'll get the Doom off. Can he and Mickey turn this one around? They're looking to bring down nine. The lasso from Nisha is there, but the cookie over from Aramis straight on towards the Bat Rider. Wait for four from Mickey, but he can't get him. Nine, able to blink away. Zai with the Doom finally takes down the DK. But Zai, he's being focused down by 33. His own doom coming to an end. Aramis in with the cookie onto the two of them. There's no DK. They need him for the damage. Nine. He's too low. He has to get out of here. They're not letting him, though. Nisha, looking for more. He's gone in. Mikkei. Refresher there for Nisha. Nine. Holy crap. Oh, my goodness. I cannot believe this. <laughs> this is insane. I mean, Liquid, it looks like they should be able to clean this one up. 33, trying to hold his own. Nine buys back. Snaking also coming in. But Liquid, they somehow are able to win that one. I cannot believe they almost threw the fight with that Lotus Orb Aghanim's reflection kind of play here. They're the ones touching the Roche, but Liquid, they're going to have the numbers back up soon. And this crazy back and forth. What, 38 to 34. This is absolutely 15k lead now for Liquid. How's Mikke's buyback? Mikke's still 1,200 gold away. He needs this Roche. Things are looking even scary for him, even though they get that good fight. I mean, th th this Roche is theirs. They should be the able Roche to. The Roche is theirs now. Oh my god. I, <laughs> we don't even get to go look I mean, at that cool replay because of how were, crazy so this They were so close happened. to losing the game there. What was it? Four buybacks. I, I, literally not. I think, what, eight heroes well, bought back or something. Like, seven heroes. I mean, they'll get the Roche. Aegis is going to be there on Mickey. He's got a full Aghanims now, and he does almost have his full buyback. I mean... <sighs> I mean, they actually almost lose the game because of that Lotus interaction with Aghanim's, like, last stuff. But now, back into a comfortable position, taking a breather. They need to calm themselves. They're in a good spot here. Mickey, with this Aegis, he's got good coverage. 900 gold tail buyback. I mean, look how much, I mean, of course, amped up by the fact that he's got the Aghanim's ball. 42k net worth on the Morphling. For sure. He's got all the, all the items in the world to play with now, Mickey. Aegis as well. Nearly level 28. He's got cheese in the backpack ready for round two in the team fight. And this, honestly, the Ags, all these type of things matter in these type of, I mean, everything matters, of course, with this, but now versus the DK, this is going to hurt, and he's going to have extra status resist as well, too, to protect himself versus these bit of limited control we've seen with Mickey being able to jump in and out. This game is insane. I mean, the graph shows, like, how close, <laughs> you see this massive divot right after that last play well, happened. Uh, that, <laughs> yeah, that moment there, Liquid, were definitely, uh, a bit of panic probably set in, but they kept their cool. And just as quickly, really, as Tundra got that turn around Liquid, they slammed it back in their favor. <sighs> yeah, just a, a momentary blip there in the progress for Liquid. I'm, uh, must have been a heart attack for Blitz. <laughs> He's probably, <laughs> look what's going oh, on. I mean, <laughs> oh, my goodness.
He should just have. I mean, I think both teams clear. now probably going to calm it down a little bit whilst they wait for the buybacks to come back online. Yep. Liquid in a more, much more comfortable position, of course. The tier fours did drop, of course, during all this crazy shenanigans that happened. The creeps weren't able to take it out. Oh. The Tundra can deal with this though. Now they got Skeeter. Sure can. Throwing out the illusions, he can push the waves out. You know, whilst Liquid have this lead, have the Aegis, it's not. It's still not super easy for them to close this game out. No. Mickey having the two lives is very important, though. Kind of three lives, especially if Insane is in position always. I mean, these supports we've seen so many times as these saves at fractions of HP. Yeah, I mean, the, the disruption last time, buying that time for, yep. for the DK for Skeeter. Now for, I mean, now for Tundra, the game is very, very difficult, though. They have to com like completely out like, outplay versus this side of Liquid, because he's also hit 25. So on top of the... Shadow, the Silver Edge that they have, he's got the Doom Applies Break, and he's got a Refresher. So he's got two full rounds okay. of this AoE Doom that AoE breaks as well. Someone's got to kill him. Hey, but how? Insania always seems to be in the right place to bail out his buddy. Oh boy, smoker from both sides. This is a risky smoke, right? Buyback status is not great for either side. M Mick is the important one, though. He does have it. Skeeter. Skeeter. Oh, they know he's around. That's not the it's real an illusion. one. That's going to be the first Doom. Okay, he's got another one. I mean, Aramis is heading in on this. I mean, 33 is ready as well from the side. But, uh, it's moments. You know, Liquid, no, they'll back off. They won't try and force it, despite the fact, as you say, they do have that refresher option ready. I think they they might want to, because they have this Aegis. They, they have this blanket for two minutes I mean, for Mickey. A minute and 40 seconds left on the Aegis. And it's a big time to hit. If they kill some of these heroes that don't have buyback, it will be game over. Mm -hmm. Skeeter does have the buyback available. Boxy. He'll be safe. Nisha. Nisha. Oh, but the Lotus. The Lotus is there. They're straight away, so Nisha's going to be hard to position himself. Mickey gets inside. Jumps forward. They're in onto the DK. Everything being focused down onto the DK, but the Skeeter's going to be saved by the disruption. Nisha turns his attention over towards Nai, but Nai's able to get the Rolling Thunder offside. Pushing them back here, getting on top of both Aramis and Skeeter with the Doom. Rolling Thunder bounces across once more. Skeeter holding the high ground, turning over towards Zai. Zai, he'll get taken out of the game. Two minutes dead now on the Doom. Mickey, round two. Wave form forward over towards Aramis. Turns towards Snaking. He'll get caught up by the stumble with the BKB persisting. Mickey gets shoved forward aggressively. The disruption buys time here for the Blink Out. Skeeter's dead. He's searching the tree. I need he's going to be able to find him. Mickey finding Snaking in the trees, takes him out, no buyback available for Snaking. There's a buyback available for Skeeter, and here it comes. Ravage. It's a good Ravage, and nine, Skeeter, they jump straight over towards Insania. They delete the two supports, Insania and Boxy are gone. They're holding on here, Tundra. Mickey, he's got to go for the bailout, but 33 finds him. Mickey, he's got a blink in a I second. Mean, Can he get away? Oh, he's got 33, is he able to get any sort of damage onto him? No. He blinks out. Oh my goodness, he nearly caught him there with the shard, but Mickey still gets out. Still, the overall Tundra, they hold. I right, insane execution they of hold. these team fights. And they're able to kill Mikke the once through the false promise. They isolate everyone else. Nisha, he actually ends up getting Skeeter, but the buy bracket look, seems to catch Liquid a bit off guard. I mean, how much can Tundra do now? <sighs> There's four dead, no buybacks on Liquid's side. They gotta get their lanes pushed out. Step one, the three cores are alive. Have to be a little careful how they split up also, because Mickey, he does ridiculous damage at this point if he does find somebody isolated. Oh, he's got so much money as well. 9,000 gold. Where, I mean, where can he still go with this? He's still got the ability to buy the Moon Shard. I mean, probably the Moon Shard. I mean, maybe is, he is does, that it? Maybe just Moon Maybe just refreshers for his backpack yep. first. Yep. Honestly, the Moon Shard not as effective. Maybe he needs that one first, but he, they're hunting I mean, him. They're he, looking he did for him. He showed himself on that wave. They know he's around here. 33. Doesn't get the connection. And even if he did, Insania would have been around to help out. Was around and had the false promise ready. Liquid will get time for everyone to respawn. Oh my god, this game. I do hear you can feel it. Tundra. You really can. They've got to put everything into this. We know historically how much they've struggled to take a series against Liquid. Mm -hmm. But here today, and of course with a stand in with Aramis, maybe. Uh, it's just a little bit of a difference. It's able to sort of change the outcome. They've struggled time and time again to beat this squad. Nine has I mean, buybacks back in a minute, so maybe he wants to save his gold as well, too. He has enough to be able to buy the Abyssal, but might just have to save it. Zai, he's actually short on buyback because he doesn't have the gold. Same thing for Nisha. 
since they committed further items. And now Ooh. there is double Ravage. So there it, and honestly, 33. They can definitely still do it. It's, it's a difficult game for him to get these Ravages off, but the last few fights, he, he's been able to do it. He sure has. He's been, been able to do it. And he hasn't gotten it stolen yet. I mean, Boxy, he stole it at the end of that fight there, but they actually controlled Boxy and he wasn't able to get it off. These fights are just ridiculous. And yeah, Mickey, he does commit for his refresher, so okay. he will have okay. second round BKB and stuff like that if he's able to switch it in. Sure. And, and he's still got buyback gold. He does. So. Potential, like. He went for, for Liquid. Do they just want to try to farm up these buybacks? I mean, it's difficult because you're scared to get picked uh, yeah. off. Everything's about the fights at this point. It's, it's just so scary to show yourself in a lane. You know, if Both you start sides. to push out one of the lanes on your own, Tundra, they're going to go straight for you. Everything is going to be up to execution still here. Yeah, they're the main buyback in question being Skeeters right now. Mm -hmm. He has to be I, very careful. Yeah, Nisha and Zai. It's just about a thousand gold away from their own buybacks each, but uh, yeah, for Skeeter, it's still nearly five minutes. How's the smoke situation looking like again? I'll check it for us. There it looks like there is a smoke available for the side of Tundra in a second. Liquid. I believe they also have one smoke. Yep. Okay. I think they have one in the shop too in a second as well, but. Okay, looks like Liquid, they are gonna they are trying to farm their buybacks for these two cores for the Batrider and the Doom. They're playing near each other as well, so they're trying to be as careful as possible to have the numbers in the next fight. But it is giving opportunities, of course. Tundra's buybacks, most are coming back up. The important one, of course, Skeeters is gonna be on cooldown for some time. Yeah. Well, I mean, we, we've seen from Tundra, they're not afraid to fight. Even if they don't have that buyback ready. No, I know, mean, they know this is the sort of window where they might catch Li Liquid by surprise, because Liquid aren't going to expect them to go aggressive. Yeah. And everyone is doing, I mean, everyone's doing so much damage. Yeah, no, they're going to smoke up. There's no fear here from Tundra. They're down 28k, but they want to fight. They break it. They back away. Smoke on smoke. The tensest moments I've felt in a long time in one of these type of games. I mean, absolutely, as I say, because of... You know, for Tundra, the struggles they've had, they they don't want to let this one slip away. This would be huge if, just for, for Tundra as a team to, to be able to get this win against Liquid. Absolutely. Zai, Anisha, he's probably telling him, don't take my camp. This is my buyback. Yeah, they, he has got, it. Get that buyback gold. Okay. 300 gold short, Zai. They're going to have five. They're going to have 10 heroes. Tundra's only going to have nine. Okay. Well, they have well, nine always, no, they, but yeah, they'll have nine because there's no buyback in Skeeter, of course. Wait, what? They, yeah, uh, you know what I mean, yeah. Nine? The player. The player. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buybacks as well. They've got them all. <laughs> Apart from Skeeter. That's apart from three Skeeter. Minutes. Three minutes on Skeeter. Of course, three minutes as well. If they want to wait that out, it's going to push us close to the 60 minute. See if we get those crazy neutral items online. A DD rune in the river. Oh, Mickey, he wants it. Are they going to bait him for oh, it? Skeeter. Skeeter takes. He's able to get the jump in first, but he gets caught out. They get the telekinesis of 33 with the Ravage onto the back lines. They're focusing down the DK. But again, defensive destruction comes in with Snaking. Zai's going to jump forward with the Doom, but Skeeter was able to get the BKB out. He's trying to Turn escape, but DK jumps him with the waveform, takes him out. Skeeter's gone for two minutes. They got the own port. The going to come out from Aramis. Zai. He'll jump up with the rest of the Doom over towards 33. 33 caught here by the stolen stun. The buyback, they've got to come out. 33 step for two minutes. He has got his buyback available. Nine getting chased down by Mickey. He'll go for the BKB TP out, but the physical damage is too much. Mickey gets the triple, cleans him up. They may have done it here. They still have buyback on the Tide and in Pango, but they do not have Skitter. The numbers from Liquid. Mickey, he pops the refresher. He's I ready mean, to end this one. 33 still got a Ravage. Okay, but I mean, without Skitter, do they have enough versus all of these heroes it's, from Liquid? It's still a bit scary for Liquid. <sighs> Can okay. they force the end? He, Mickey wants to. He definitely wants to here. No DK. Level they, 30. And with the Swift Link as well. Hitting it quickly. 33 gets it with the Anchor Smash. The Doom though. I mean, they, they're just trying to focus the Ancient. Mickey, he'll turn towards 33. Gets it with the Waveform and the BKB. The Ravage will do nothing. Mickey takes 33 out. Two alive here from, from Tundra. But the Lasso's there. It's over. They couldn't quite do it today once again, Tundra, as Liquid will take this game three, and with that, the series.